Welcome to Will's Personal Development Show where we help you succeed in your health, wealth, happiness, and life. And so in this video, I wanna talk about how young students can get the most out of their first job. I've touched on similar videos already, like should you get a job while you're still in school? This one is really about having the right attitude and getting the right takeaways from your time at uh, school and at your first job. If you so choose to get your first job, and I would say that's different from a first internship, um, even if it's a paid internship, because, uh, you know, internships, it's a different beast. Uh, sometimes you, you're doing stuff for internships that you would normally not get paid in real life to do. But assuming you get your first job, and this could be anything from working at Chick-fil-A, maybe at a music instrument store, or in uh, landscaping, whatever it is, um, I think the one big takeaway that I think you should consider is make sure that you really have a good attitude, not just coming in, but going out. And what I mean by this is um, oftentimes people will not like their first job or they'll just find it's okay at best. And uh, some people do like it and that's great, but sometimes, and this is usually the case with minimum wage jobs, they find it pretty uh, repetitive, pretty boring, and even pretty mind-numbing. But uh, some of them, I think they make the mistake of having a bad attitude about it. You know, um, I've had people where I've asked them, hey, how's your first job? And they'll be like, I hate it, it sucks, or this really just is terrible. And they're doing something menial or repetitive and so forth. And it's just uh, a piss poor attitude. And here's the thing, I think you can always take away something from the job. And, and obviously, oftentimes what I see as the people who perform the best at the job, who take away the most, in my opinion at least, oftentimes they have a good attitude. Maybe they know that this is not something that they want to do for the rest of their lives, but they ask themselves, what can I take from, away from this? Well, for one, you've learned one thing that you don't like to do. You've learned things that you do like to do, and maybe if you apply yourself, you've learned about social skills, communication, customer service, all these other things that the standard person may miss because they're not really paying attention to their work. And even myself, if I had to look back, um, I've had food and dining jobs where there were definitely long periods where I was just going through the motions. If I had to go back and do it, while it may not be the most enjoyable, I would have paid more attention, worked on more, took, taken notes on my customer service, my social skills, my emotional intelligence, because those are all vital skills that are translatable to almost any occupation later in life. Plus, those with good attitudes often have more optimistic outlooks in life, and they're, they're happier, they're more positive, which leads to more positivity all around. And the more positivity you have, the more results you get in life you know, to a degree, obviously, you don't want to be unrealistically optimistic. But think about the guy who's just like super positive, super happy. And whether or not the, he really enjoys his work or, or would love it, you can see that shine off when he's taking customer orders, when he's talking to customers. Customers like him more. They tip him more. They act better towards him. They know he has a good attitude and they like his service. And I'm not saying you're going to get double your pay all of a sudden because all of a sudden you have better service and you're more positive and you get more tips. I've definitely done experiments like that where I have tried to be much more positive and stuff and the tip count didn't really go up. But in terms of intangibles, that's the things that you'll start to notice. You'll start to see customers come back to you and say, I like you, that's why I came back. I recommended this place because of you or I stick around because of you or I want you as that waiter. Um, and even if you're not doing customer service, there's always some type of positive vibe, positive attitude that you can get from that situation. So once again, in conclusion, the goal is not to really um, come away from it thinking that you are, uh, you're just, it's just a terrible job and you hate it and you dislike it. But there's always something you learn, even if it is a terrible job. And I've had crappy jobs too. You learn something from it. You learn, hey, this is what 
I don't want to do. This is what it takes to earn minimal wage. This is the type of stuff that some people have to uh, tolerate for the rest of their lives. Uh, and you really get a greater sense of gratitude, thankfulness, all these things. Because I've met a lot of people who work, what working at this place is, who basically are still more or less earning the same wage. And for whatever reason, they chose to do that. You know, they're librarians, they're, you know, managers. Maybe that's the best job they can get. What, whatever the reason. Um, and some of them have good attitudes about this. And it's something to really admire, to think about, to, to ponder. Because um, I think, if anything else, I think it, it adds a level of humbleness. Uh, it's a lesson in humility. A lesson in... Uh, you know, these are people, some of them good people, and, you know, this is their livelihood, and this this is their cap, and it's unfortunate, but that's that's where it is. And so I think all these lessons, often, often many of them being soft skills, will help you later in life, because no matter what you're doing, whether you're an engineer, developer, manager, chief technology officer, chief financial officer, investment banker, whatever it is, you will be interacting with people and uh, selling to people, creating stuff for people. And that's how businesses work. That's how they function. Even nonprofits, same thing. And that is going to require those soft skills. And the more soft skills you can identify and learn, um, and what better way than on the front line actually interacting with people, you can really get something out of it. And even if you're not interacting with people, let's say you have a job at a lab or uh, at a one person music shop or bar of some sort, um, you know, you can learn something and then move and quit. You know, I'm not saying you have to stay. You can quit. You can move to a different job. And at least you learned, okay, that's the type of work I don't like. And if you're critical and you think, critically about it you can identify certain components that you liked and didn't like oh i don't like mindless monotonous boring work oh i like this part where i get to have fun and play team building games okay that's something i look for so that's that's what i have to say there's my small little rant there and hopefully um you can have a better attitude and get a better head start than i did than others did when you have your first ever job see ya